Under Radio Rock Com. Siamo qui nella splendida cornice del Mediolanum Forum a Milano appunto ad Assago in compagnia di Jason Hu, il chitarrista dei Five Finger Death Punch che suonerà qui stasera con la sua band appunto e gli Avenged Sevenfold poi dopo. So Jason, welcome to Italy. Ciao. Ciao. How are you? I'm excellent. Yeah? With yeah. the travel, all okay? Yeah. Are you tired? No, not tired. You don't look tired. Well, thank you. You're, you I, look I, uh, really good. <clears throat> We've been um, we've been touring for uh, quite a while now. Really? Yeah, like back to back, you know. So uh, is it a world tour? It, it really is. Okay. Because city by city. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we have uh, we have brand new management now, um, mm-hmm. and we talked about what makes sense for this record cycle, and I think that. Uh, We all agreed that we needed to sort of bump up our presence in foreign countries, you know? Yeah. So, you know, after we did the Mayhem tour over the summer, yes. then we did a headline tour, but we went across Canada mm. and some of the states. Canada is your town. Yes, it is. You original, uh, you, you were born in Canada. I am, Ontario. eh? Yeah, say take off, eh? Hey, hey, <laughs> hey is that your accent? Because I don't hear so much the difference. No, 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 my, my accent, you know, I've been living in America for many years, yes. so my accent is very subtle. Okay. But every once in a while I'll go out, out, out in the booth. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, like a boat. Out in the booth, yeah. <laughs> we went across Canada, finished up that headline tour, literally like five days later we're on a plane headed this direction. Wow. Right to Helsinki from Vegas. Wow. So then there started the European tour. Exactly. Wow. Voilà. So, uh, I'm going to begin asking you about uh, about this couple of albums. I mean, the title is uh, really long, long yeah. at first, but it's particular. I mean, um, <clears throat> the wrong side of heaven and the righteous side of hell. Uh, what is the wrong side of heaven? Well, the, the whole thing be behind the title is uh, it sort of suggests that you're in, not in either place. Mm. So you're stuck right in the middle, you know? All right. You're neither full, fully extreme this way or fully extreme that way. Okay, you sort know, of purgatory. Purgatory, exactly. All I mean, right. this, is a, this is a title that Ivan Moody came up with, and I find myself having to explain it for him. Okay. <laughs> But that's, you know, that's kind of it. It's, it's, it's you're stuck somewhere in the middle. Okay. But purgatory wasn't enough, I mean. Well, purgatory... We needed the, the longest thing. Sure. Purgatory <laughs> ends up being the title of the live uh, the bonus discs okay purgatory one and two all right the first one's an audio concert just for listening and then the second volume yeah has a video concert all right yeah. so and it will uh, be released when it's out now ah, it's already out uh, just, sorry. it just came out ah, I mean, okay. like two three days ago yeah so you're, right. you're off the hook i can okay So, uh, the righteous side of heaven and the wrong side of hell are the same place. But wrong side of heaven, righteous side of hell. Wrong side of heaven, righteous side of hell. Yeah. Sorry. Volume Sorry. one. Volume Sorry. two. Um, I mean, um, between, uh, since I, I still didn't take my time to read the lyrics of the second uh, volume. Me either. Okay. Fantastic <laughs> coffee here in uh, Milan. Uh, that's not the typical Italian coffee espresso. Mm. Espresso, but I, yeah, it is. I had a but little milk. You took the ah, with milk. I love milk, yeah, because it's very uh, bitter, strong, you know. Yeah, but it'll wake you up, that's for sure. It's got a kick, yes, it, you know? yes, it's Which better than the Red Bull, way better. Yeah, this is the real deal. <laughs> so, um, are there uh, some uh, any differences uh, between the lyrics of the volume one and the volume two? <clears throat> well, you know. You're the first person to ask me that, actually, because yeah. a lot of people just want to know about the songs in general or the, or how the two albums compare. But I think that lyrically, if I were to look at it myself, I think that the first, I think the, the lyrics on the first record come off uh, with more anger. Okay. You got burn motherfucker and yeah. all that you and, you know, some aggro shit. More in your face. Yeah, like. it's, it's aggro. And I find that um, on volume... Uh, And volume two, yeah. it's a little bit more song oriented. There's stuff like Cradle to the Grave or Matter of Time, Let It Go. These are just not as angry sounding, but maybe a little bit more introspective, like he's talking about himself. Okay. You know. Okay. We heard it on our way for coming here because we are from Turin. We need about uh, one and a half hour, oh, uh, almost yeah, two hours right? to, for, yeah, you to came get that in far Milan. today? 
Um, I guess, I mean, it is uh, 150 kilometers. Wow. Little. Just for you, Jason. <laughs> um, so, um, we have a little bit same coordinates, even the, if the second volume is less uh, angry. Uh, I mean, they are powerful, they are monolithic, incredible. Um, why every guest star is in the volume one? Oh. And no one is in the volume two. Well, we did record a bunch of uh, friends of ours. Yes. Uh, we do have guest appearances for volume two. Yeah. I think that um, the what my take on it was that we had a lot of people that were confused mm. with volume one. As yeah. far as like, I don't get it. The same song's on there twice. Like they weren't putting it together that the, the song was on there, but it was with a featured guest. Yes. So they get the regular version. Yeah. And then you get the song again with the guests. Yes. Right? As bonus tracks. I think a lot of people are like, I don't understand why there's the same songs on there twice. Yeah, I, I'm seeing with uh, Max Cavalera. This, yeah, that's like, the case. I mean, you know, people obviously not um, getting the whole point of it. So we decided for volume two that we would just release it as our own 12 songs, proper record, right? And then that we would uh, use the guest tracks uh, for something else or release them separately on iTunes. All right. But keep so, them away from the record and just have the record be its own thing. I got it. Uh, who you were more comfort comfortable to work with? I mean, you have uh, Mr. Max Cavalera, mm -hmm. I guess. He, my mate, he considers Max Cavalera like a sort of... Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah? Oh, a sort of spiritual father. Nice. Then we have Jamie Jester from Hatebreed, Maria Brink from In This Moment, which she's a pleasure for the ears right. as much as for the eyes, I want to say. <laughs> and who you were more comfortable, comfortable to work with? Um, well, the Rob Halford experience was pretty special. Um, I, let's see how that worked. I out. saved the question just for him. Just for him. <laughs> well, the thing is, um, we really didn't expect him to agree to it, you know. We weren't, ex we're, we weren't expecting him to, to actually want to get involved. It was just one of those ideas that was thrown into the room at one day at the studio where you're listening to the music and somebody said, you know, this reminds me of like, you got another thing coming. Like, <laughs> dun, 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 you know what I mean? It's kind of got yeah. That, yeah. that older type of feel and groove to it. So, so somebody said, a little bit of old school. Yeah, but it's still highly effective. I mean, that groove is like that kind of drive and pocket, like, whoa, dude, you know, gets, yes. it, gets it going, you know? Anyway, um, somebody said, wouldn't it be fucking awesome if Rob <laughs> Halford sang on this? And everyone starts going, hmm, let's make a call, you know? Instead of just going, ah, and, you know, um, fortunately, our manager, um, the wonderful, talented, uh, and attractive Jackie Kaiser at 10th Street. <laughs> she said, well, I've, I've known Rob for 10 years. I'll call him on Monday. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So The metal guy. Yeah. And uh, he, he said, well, send, send me the song. Yeah. And he said, I love it. I love it. It's going to be a hit. I want to be on it for sure. I mean, we have a radio streaming 24 hours every day. We spin a lot. We spin this track. I mean... Ridiculously, it's uh, really great, and it—if you hear it, you have the feeling that the song would be perfect also without Rob. But with Rob, it's far away from perfection. Yeah. I mean, yes, yeah. well, another level. It—it's uh, one of those things where an idea turns into magic. Yes, it's really a magical moment. It just, I mean, for us personally, to hear something that we've created and then boom Rob Halford drops in it's like you kind of go Ooh, fuck. Yeah. you know and um, I guess you could those little yeah it was really cool and not just having him on the record but the fact that um, the fact that we spent some time with him with the dinner he, he showed uh, he was he was gracious enough to come and sing with us at the Golden Dawn Awards in right. Los Angeles so uh, um, just getting to know Rob, he's just a really wonderful guy, and uh, just, you know, you just go, he's just a cool guy. 
Yes, because um, I heard by don't know many other artists, they just you know send the track and that and then got it back, but they don't meet each other. Some and of it, that happened too. And so uh, also to you it happened. Yeah, yeah. But meeting the artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the one. You know, that's the one we wanted to have show up, and what we were fortunate enough. You can come on in here and eat that if you want. Yeah, go ahead. You just gotta listen to my interviews. Yeah. <laughs> You can come on in here and eat that if you want. Yeah, go ahead. You just gotta listen to my interviews. Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't bother you. <laughs> for those of you at home, we're doing this in the dining room uh, for the catering, the catering area. Yeah. And we are having also a nice radio service. <laughs> right. So here you go. It's a little uh, extra version. Bertolli. <laughs> um, let's talk about. <clears throat> House of the Rising Sun. Okay. A song that's, that's magical. Uh, totally surrounded by mystery. Uh, we don't know who wrote it at first. Who was the first one to record the song? Did you know uh, Bob Dylan made a version? And then he heard the, the Animals version and he decided, okay, I give up. I won't sing anymore. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> so it actually. How did you <clears throat> came up for with this idea? Uh, well, it wasn't, it wasn't my idea, I had nothing to do with it, to be okay. honest. Um, but it was one of those things where, um, you know, we knew we were going to do two, you know, at the point we did, we knew we were going to do two records, come on in. Um, we thought we should probably toy with the idea of doing a couple cover songs. Okay. And uh, that was one that Ivan was really uh, adamant about doing. He was like, I've always loved that song. I know I can sing the shit out of it. And, uh, you know, basically talks about a whorehouse. Yeah. <laughs> which may or may not be cool or very rock and roll, but I think so. Anyway, he says, down in Sin City is the New Orleans. So we, there's a little twist on it. Plus, I think the, uh, the cool thing about redoing that song for us was the, uh, we changed the um, time signature. The original is in three, four time. Yeah. So That's it's one, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, right? So yeah. We, and we change it to four. That's cool. One, two, three. Yeah, we were going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're doing it in four. So um, that's just a little, you know, musical. Yes. Technical note. Yeah. Um, because if you, if we mean, I don't mean, know, poetically, yeah, okay, it's a warhouse, but. You know, at the end of the journey about the wrong side of heaven and the righteous side of hell, there is the house of the rising sun. We read it, I think, oh wow. Yeah. Oh. Um, <clears throat> Battleborn. Yeah. Uh, that's your way to say keep fighting, but also a tribute uh, to your fans in the, in the army. Um, uh, what do you think about this stuff? What do you think about the world situation right now? The world situation? The world situation. Oh, the world situation? Yes. God, we'll be here all day. That's a long, 
That's a heavy duty question. Um, we like to do tough questions. You, you, uh, you want to, what do I think about the world situation? Yeah. Or do you want to be more specific? Yes, because you know you came from another con. You come from another continent. We come from here, and that's an interesting point of view. Um, okay. Well, I'm Canadian. I'll just throw that out there right now. Yeah. And um, lucky for me, um, you are not involved in the U.S. history. Well, not so much that, but um, I do live in America right now, and I do have my. Uh, you know, my green card. And I think that, uh, and I've spent a lot of time with the men and women of the armed forces, and we have visited the uh, areas of the world that are in conflict while it's getting deep. And uh, all I can tell you is that the general population um, doesn't really understand and perhaps doesn't fully appreciate the conditions that these people who essentially volunteer um, they sign up for this right um, have to live in or go through and uh, it's impressive like we went over to Iraq and you know we're talking temperatures that are you know well above a hundred degrees and just stifling hot not to mention, there's uh, you get sand in everything. I mean, you would have sand everywhere. You wouldn't want sand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's in your eyes, nose, ears, in your mouth. It's in your you hair. Breathe it, you yeah, it's, eat it. It's really crazy. Um, it, yeah, it's brutal. You know, and uh, we spent we spent a lot of time over there, and and it was a it was a wonderful experience, and it was a good opportunity for us to. For me especially, because I, I'm sort of, that's my thing, I, I, I've studied all the classic wars and I really do, uh, I'm fascinated with that on a level of, I'm impressed by it, you know what I mean? Like, just the idea of people putting themselves in the line of fire just to do their job, you know what I mean? That to me is impressive. Yeah. I mean, we think we're, we think we're strong and special. And all we have to do is, you know, walk out on stage for an yeah. hour and, and people love us. But imagine these people that are, you know, it's kind of a thankless job. They're out there, you know, getting killed or whatnot. And some of the, and if, if there's no combat involved, boy, we're getting deep on this whole stuff. If there's no combat involved, some of these people, their job is to just man a gate or be a mechanic and they're just fixing shit all day long. I mean, it's, like, it's a very, very um, difficult uh, job, you know. Uh, and lifestyle. So, I mean, you know, my opinion, at least on that part of your question, or yeah. the military part of the question, we're, we didn't cover the world. <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm impressed. I guess. Extremely impressed. You impressed also by reporting that. Uh, let's, talk, let's talk about something, uh, I mean, more uh, delightful, I don't know. Uh, I told you before we ran into this video. I mean, you played with all these artists for those uh, for those albums, uh, but this jam with Ace Freely, yeah. Bill Kellyer, and of course Jason Who. How yeah. was it? Uh, well, that was another one of those moments where I feel very uh, very fortunate to be in the position I am. You know, um, this was the kind of thing where um, the president of Gibson. We can keep talking. I love talking. <laughs> so we gotta go. No, I guess. We, we have to go. No, we have to go. And she said we gotta go. No, I, I control this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just answer this question. Um, the Gibson Jam. One last question. Okay. 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 No, no, no. Let me answer this one. Ah, it's the last. It's the last one. Yeah. Um, you played also with the pop star Mandy Moore. Oh shit! Let's talk about his freely. <laughs> <laughs> If you want, <clears throat> I'll t listen. Uh, when, so let me talk about Ace Freely for a second. Yes. Okay. Of so, course. and I'll make it quick. So the, the CEO of Gibson, mm. right, um, Henry Jeskowitz. Yes. He was having an investor meeting, right? Yes. Every, every once in a while, he rallies all these Wall Street millionaires, and yeah. he rallies a bunch of money together to do something big with Gibson. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the plan was, but he wanted to expand in some way. Okay. So he sent a, a personal invitation to the three of us. Well, Bill, myself, and Ace, saying, can you please show up at this 
and talk about what it's like to be a signature Gibson artist. So this is a real honor. We're in a small little yes. room, a little cocktail party uh, somewhere in Manhattan, and um, here I am on the microphone talking to these, you know, wealthy guys. And at the end, we got to jam together. And of course, you know, I have an Ace Freely tattoo on my leg. Wow, I got a Metallica one. Do you? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so, no, I wanted to just ask you the different work with a um, band, like Five, like, uh, five Finger Death Punch, mm -hmm. and the solo artist, like uh, you did for Mandy Moore. Uh, I mean, in the work, not just in, of course, the musical style. Uh, well, it's really simple, actually. I mean, every, I think every musician desires to be the artist. Yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, or at least, at least for me, I've always been a songwriter. It's always been something like, I enjoy the creative element of picking up a guitar, writing something, and then showing it to someone and having it, it, some kind of feedback from it. You know. Okay. Um, I think every artist has a desire. Sorry, every musician has the desire to be the artist. Yes. And the, the situation, what happened with me is that when I moved from Canada, I was desperate, you know, I had nothing, zero. So I, my only, the pact that I made with myself when I got to LA, I was just going to play guitar for anybody that was willing to have me. Yes. And whatever gig came up, it wouldn't, I was just going to learn something from every situation. Because okay. there's something to be learned from every situation. Of course. Good, bad, like it or not. Of course. And so I learned a lot of good stuff from those uh, situations and got to sustain myself and stay, you know, stay alive in LA until I got a chance to land where I am now. In a big city. I'm a lucky SOB. Like yeah. Son of a bitch. Let me just say, I mean, you got a good taste with music, the solos, okay. particularly on the second volume, we really enjoyed them very much. High five. <laughs> <laughs>